In this video, let's see how to manage individual projects using the Project Management Suite. When you create a new project from the Quick Action buttons, a new card will open. You are invited to choose between the Large Projects Portal or the Small Projects Portal. The main difference is the number of templates that are actually part of each portal. We will look at each one of those in details in this video. The learning platform project that I have here is an example of a large project. On the left you have the list of all project documentation. On the right you see the dashboard which allows you to manage meetings, tasks, reports, and analytics. Let's take a look at the documents. They are divided by the project stage. I have selected the most important templates that are linked to the management of a large project. Before we dive deeper, let's see how we should define a large project. Large and small projects, as defined by manager hacks, differ in duration, number of team members involved, or the complexity of the expected outcome. For example, a large project spans over several months. This could be the building of an app or the creation of a new product. In addition to the duration of the project, there will also be several people collaborating within that large project. The large projects may also require specific funding, there will be need for very structured communication, and there might be the need to select suppliers and involve external parties. When you have this kind of complexity in your projects, you will be better suited with the large projects template. Looking closer at what we can find behind the large project template, you will see that behind each one of the project documents lies a template that is ready to be filled in. They are not just empty pages, but rich documents which help you worry less about structure and focus on the content. Let's take a look at the business case document. You have areas to fill in to prepare a professional business case, an executive summary, a recap of the problem you're trying to solve, and so on. You can calculate the CBA, the cost and benefits analysis, and also explain what are the risks. Of course, if there is an element you don't need, you can remove it. For example, let's say the market assessment is not necessary you can simply select that area and with the backspace you can delete it. I will just bring it back here for the example. The same logic follows within each one of the documents. Now some of those documents have databases within them. For example, the KPIs tracker allows you to set up the KPIs for your project and dynamically follow them throughout the project lifecycle. Start by defining the KPIs at the beginning of the project. You might have noticed that I've only used text-based properties for the KPIs. The reason is very practical. Since you can have different measurement types, like percentages, currency, or another measure, it's easier to initially set them up as a text and simplify your work. You will also find linked the latest results for each KPI which you will fill in throughout the project. You set them up in the beginning and then you measure regularly for example, every month. Let's look at another example. The project team overview is in the format of a table that helps you clarify who is part of your project, what their responsibilities are, and also their time allocation and availability. It's extremely easy to add new lines, to remove lines, and to make that yours. If we continue with another document, let's look at the Rasi matrix. The Rossi matrix is extremely important in project management to help you manage the accountability of team members. You list all the tasks in your projects. Then you can either add the role of each team, or, of course, you can add individual project members. The purpose is to make a very visual representation of the roles and responsibilities within the project. I will let you discover each one of those documents and the structure they offer. Now, what is important is that you would find detailed explanation of how each one of those documents work and what are the best practices when you go back to the projects hub. Go back to the hub and go to the page, all templates. You will find the complete list of available templates. There are several tags. Are they suitable for large, small, or medium projects? Also, which documents to use in which project stage. Once you enter into any of those templates, you will get an information area which explains in a few words what the document is about and how to fill it in. Let's go back to the project card learning platforms to continue discovering what you will find inside. On the right we have several areas collecting important information about the project so that everybody can have visibility over the most important pieces of the project. 
To start with, you have the reports. We're talking about monthly status reports. Maybe you need to make them more often, let's say on a weekly basis, you can modify this within each project. The button allows you to create a new status report which you can then move on the right with a simple drag and drop. Once you open it, you can start filling it in with the most important information about your project this month. Some others you will be able to have as a screenshot so that you can have a snapshot of the specific moment of this project. Just below you will have the meetings that are linked to this project. You can create a new meeting and when you open it, you will be able to select one of the templates that have already been pre-configured so that you don't have to always fill in the structure. You would fill in the notes and you will not worry about what you need to add in each one of those meetings but you can focus on the conversation instead. I'll let you discover what's behind each one of those templates that are present over here. By the way, if you need to modify any of those templates, remove anything from the structure, you should go to the template setting and you can modify each template by opening the edit menu with the three small dots on the right of each template. The template page opens and you would be able to modify the selected template. Just be careful because you would modify that template for everybody who is using the project management suite and it will apply for each new meeting using this template. This will, however, not modify existing meeting notes. Now you click anywhere outside to leave that edit page and your new meeting template is saved. Within the tasks you will have similar views to the ones on the hub page, but filtered for this specific project. You will also see a few more details, like the workload in hours, the priority level, you would be able to see every open task. Everything that is overdue and then you would have a view about all tasks. When you start working on a project, you would start by filling in all the tasks. After the tasks area, you will see the analytics corner. By default, you will see three main graphs about your project. You can modify those graphs within the settings. If you make any changes here, they would only apply for that project so feel free to do it. If you need to report on some other figures, or if you want to change the colors, you can do it all from over here. For example, you can change the priority of the tasks and see how many tasks you have per priority level. So right now we can see we have way too many high priority tasks. Well, if everything is important nothing is important. So we should use the graphs to analyze our projects and adapt where needed. At the bottom you can see the timeline. If you have the same view as me you can just click here on any of those arrows. By default, Notion would open the view on the date today. In this example, the timeline of this project is in the past so we need to go back in time to see the full timeline. A tip for you, if you need to modify the dates you can simply drag the different tasks. You can go at the very edge of each of the tasks to make it longer or shorter. If you want to remove several tasks at the same time, you can select them putting your cursor at the right of the table, outside the table area. You can delete them using the delete button of your keyboard. You can also move them. If you have to postpone the project with a month you can simply select all timeline tasks and drag them to the new date. That was the overview of the large project portal. Now let's see how the small project portal looks like. A small project example that we have is the Christmas campaign. Let's open that project. At the top you will find the same properties as for any project, no matter its size. Start by assigning an owner. Then we add the stage. Afterwards, we have several automated properties. The time left is a very long formula so be careful to not modify this by mistake. The budget is linked to the tasks of this project. There are also several hidden properties that I call the setup properties that we need to calculate the progress, the budget, and assign meetings and tasks to this project. Looking at the small project card, you will find that it's similar to the large project but way simpler. You can see that we have a way shorter list of documents that are recommended to add within a small project. The logic is the same. You will find some of the same templates. For example, within the requirements we're using the Moscow technique. We can define the functionalities of our product or the requirements for an event. This template helps us then order each requirement by importance and complexity so we can make informed decisions on what we should do and what we won't do. Going back to the project card Christmas campaign, we can find the other pre-filled documents. Let's look at the raid log. 
This is actually a recap of all the risks, assumptions, issues or dependencies that you have identified for the project. I strongly recommend using the log because it helps you take a step back and reflect on what could impact your project and anticipate any problem. In addition, within the small projects card, you can find an area where you can just drop the working files you are using for the project. Those could be design files or documents, anything that makes sense within your project. You can list them here and then that will hide within that toggle. Same for the final deliverables, you can add them here. It's a great help for everybody who would need to check on that project to find the final results, be it products, or any specific file. On the right, you will find the project team overview which is also within a toggle. In a small project, I find that it's way easier to add this directly in the dashboard. Normally we would have a maximum of 3-4 people working on a small project and it makes it very easy to have a quick overview to know who is working on this right now and with what time allocation. Within the large projects, you have that as a separate page because actually the project teams are way more complex. Next, the reports area is the same as for the large projects. The meeting area is the same as well. It's linked to the main meetings database and you can find all the meetings linked to this project. Within the planning, you will find a more simplified task area. You will find the timeline next to the open tasks and your own tasks views. Here, there is also a view called fill in info. I recommend you to always start with this view. You'll be able to easily fill in all the information about your tasks with the name, the deadline, which stage it's linked to, who is the owner, the status of completion, any budget allocated to it, the priority of the task and the workload associated to completing it. All this information is used to inform your timeline. You can manipulate the timeline in the same way you've seen for the large projects by selecting several tasks starting from a point on outside to the right of the table. Moving things around on mass or one by one by selecting and dragging the edges of different tasks. Now, something that I have not added here by default is what we call dependencies for projects. You could actually add that in your own copy of the suite. Let's see how. Let's say that the developing the risk management plan needs to be finished before we conduct the kickoff. There is a small arrow that appears on the right of the first task. You can select and drag it until the kickoff meeting task line. You will see that the dependencies menu opens and invites you to decide how you want to set this up. You can choose whether tasks should shift or not, whether you avoid weekends, etc. Then you switch on the dependencies functionality and it will appear on your timeline. If you want to change how those appear, you can go into the options of the timeline. Be careful as here you are modifying the options for all the projects, not only this one. Within the dependencies menu, you can change how the different tasks shift when they overlap. Just select that option, click somewhere outside of the menu and the setting is saved. And now, if you move one of the tasks further, then the one that is dependent on it would move as well. I didn't want to add this functionality by default because it might seem a bit strict and complicated at first, but feel free to activate this for your projects. Alright, so this is how the small project card looks like. When you go back to the Project Master Hub, you can create new projects, you can select one of the templates that we have seen and then you would be able to use all the linked databases such as the tasks or the meetings and then all this page would start filling up the more you work on your projects. We have now seen how the large and small project cards function within the Project Master Hub. You can now use the templates for your projects. The next section will show you some more advanced functions and how to modify specific templates.